Our topic for this session is renal vascular emergencies. Our first case is a renal vein thrombosis. This is a patient that presented with a fever, right flank pain, and dehydration. Note the heterogeneity of the right nephrogram and the slight delay relative to the left kidney. Note also that small fluid collection in the anterior right renal parenchyma I initially called that as a suspected focal nephronia and a possible septic thrombophlebitis of the right renal vein. It turned out that was in fact not the case. Here you can see the filling defect extending from the right renal vein sticking out into the IVC, a fairly typical appearance of a renal or adrenal vein thrombus extending into the IVC. You can appreciate the heterogeneity of the right nephrogram, most notably right here, and that small fluid collection, which may just represent a small focus of ischemic necrosis. Then we'll go back up and appreciate the extensive filling defect there within the right renal vein sticking out into the IVC. So that's a case of renal vein thrombosis most likely related to a febrile illness and dehydration. Our next case is a renal and ovarian vein thrombosis shown on a non-contrast scan. There's obviously extensive perinephric fluid and stranding suggesting some renal pathology. There is significant enlargement and hyperdensity of the left renal vein, allowing you to make the diagnosis of renal vein thrombosis even on this non-contrast study. More inferiorly, you can also see expansion and increased density within the left ovarian vein. Uh, fairly commonly, left renal venous thrombosis will extend down the ovarian vein, and we'll see that again in this session. Here you can appreciate that hyperdense and expanded left renal vein, and as we go inferiorly, it extends into that left ovarian vein, which is markedly enlarged, tortuous, and hyperdense. So that is a case of left renal and ovarian venous thrombosis. Our next case is a renal cell carcinoma with renal vein invasion. Of course, the renal cell carcinoma is one of those classically angioinvasive tumors. You can see the filling defect here extending from the right renal vein into the IVC. And note specifically the contrast enhancement within that otherwise hypodense filling defect. Pretty much classic appearance of tumor angioinvasion, clearly denoting a soft tissue component to that filling defect. More inferiorly, there is an obvious, large, heterogeneous, and enhancing mass extending from the inferior aspect of the right kidney whose malignant intent cannot be mistaken. So let's first appreciate that filling defect here within the right renal vein extending into the IVC and heading superiorly. Note again that contrast enhancement of the otherwise hypodense filling defect. Then more inferiorly, again that large heterogeneous enhancing mass. So that is a renal cell carcinoma with renal vein invasion. Our next case is an adrenal cortical carcinoma. The adrenal cortical carcinoma is on that list of angioinvasive tumors, tumors as well, and it is important to distinguish from renal tumors as they frequently can be confusing. So here we see a suprarenal enhancing heterogeneous mass. More inferiorly, you can see another enhancing filling defect, filling and expanding the left renal vein and crossing the midline to enter the IVC. There is the mass, and note that clean interface with the otherwise deformed but separate 
superior left renal pole. And then here you can see that enhancing filling defect extending into the left renal vein and IVC. But note slightly more inferiorly, that thrombus, that filling defect, extends into the left ovarian vein, which we can actually see right here. Now let's follow that up. And lose it right there. This is actually shown better on the coronal view, where you see that large adrenal mass with a hypodense enhancing filling defect involving the left renal vein. But look just inferior to that, right here in the proximal segment of the left ovarian vein, you can see additional angioinvasive tumor occluding that proximal portion of the vessel. Let's go more posteriorly and appreciate the interface, the preservation of that interface between the adrenal gland and the superior left renal pole. So that is a case of an angioinvasive adrenocortical carcinoma. Our next case is an extensive arterial embolization. This involves all of the parenchymal organs, the liver, and the spleen both show wedge-shaped hypodensities that are very well circumscribed and typical in appearance for infarcts. Look at the kidneys. They have extensive wedge-shaped hypodensities, very well circumscribed and consistent with an embolic shower. So let's first appreciate the extensive hepatic infarcts. You don't see pure arterial hepatic infarcts all that frequently, so it's a nice chance to do that. Note also the anterior spleen, clearly infarcted. Let's appreciate these kidneys, the multifocal wedge-shaped cortical hypodensities, clearly denoting an embolic shower. To get the full story here, we have to go to this patient's chest. He presented with a large, multilobulated, hypodense right hemithorax mass, which here you can see extending into the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein here is occluded, and that occlusive filling defect extends all the way into the left atrium. When we proceed more inferiorly through all these infarcted organs, you can appreciate the largest portion of that embolization actually occluded the distal aorta. So this patient, of course, did not survive, but a pretty striking case of massive arterial embolization related ultimately to a primary lung carcinoma with pulmonary venous invasion. Our next case is a straightforward thromboembolic renal infarct I like this case because of the extent of loss of the left nephrogram and the visualization of a filling defect in the mid and distal left renal artery, which, although tortuous, still viewed nicely in plane here. Here you can appreciate the almost complete absence of a left nephrogram. Note the preserved parenchyma still is wedge-shaped and well circumscribed, uh, sort of a reverse of the normal thromboembolic appearance. I'm going back up to show you that occluded left renal artery, again shown nicely in plane there, with a filling defect throughout its mid and distal portions. So that is a case of a thromboembolic renal infarct. Note the relative lack of atherosclerotic disease, again, consistent with a uh, more proximal and possibly even cardiac source. Our next case is a renal artery aneurysm rupture. You can see here continuity between the right renal artery, which is markedly expanded and tortuous, and this homogeneous enhancing mass with peripheral calcifications denoting a vascular structure. Note also there is extensive perinephric fluid 
which is slightly hyperdense, suggestive of hemorrhage. More inferiorly, you can again see that homogeneous enhancing mass with peripheral calcifications, and there is also an ill-defined collection of contrast density consistent with extravasation. Let's look first at that vascular mass. Again, homogeneous enhancement, peripheral calcifications, and continuity right there anteriorly with the enlarged and tortuous right renal artery. Now here, more inferiorly, right on the posterior aspect of that homogeneous mass, you can see that small wisp of extravasation representing active hemorrhage. So that is a renal artery aneurysm with acute rupture and extravasation. Our last case is of Wegener granulomatosis. There are multiple well-circumscribed rounded contrast collections within the liver. This is an arterial phase scan and those are consistent with hepatic artery aneurysms. Note also this irregular, slightly hyperdense fluid collection in the suprarenal region that represents perinephric hemorrhage as we see here. Note in the kidneys as well we have these rounded contrast collections consistent with renal artery aneurysms and a very large posterior left perinephric fluid collection with layering density consistent with hemorrhage. So here is that left perinephric hemorrhage with layering density. And then we'll go back up through these and appreciate those small foci of contrast enhancement within the kidneys and also within the liver, consistent with arterial aneurysms. So hepatic and renal artery aneurysms with active active extravasation, uh, most likely related to a left renal artery aneurysm. What puts it all together? Well, this cavitary lesion does. Uh, that little focus there allows you to confidently make the diagnosis of Wegener granulomatosis as the underlying pathology in this case. And that concludes this session on renal vascular emergencies.